This is coming to you from John Wayne's 26 Bar Ranch in Eager, Arizona. When I read the script, I was thrilled. I thought, by God, they wrote this for the two of us. And Duke sent me the script, and that's it. You're doing it. He wouldn't have used anybody else. Catherine. George Washington McClintock. There isn't another woman that I know of who could have played those scenes. We need about an hour to mention all of the wonderful performers that were in the film. What a privilege. Uh... It was for me to be involved with this film and with these people. Uh, it was more than just a job. It was more than just a movie. It was, at the same time, a realization of a dream. It also was a dream that lasted through time, and we all remained friends, which was the greatest gift that I could ever have received. Mike produced McClintock and he was a fine, fine producer. We made McClintock in Nogales and uh, Old Tucson, Arizona. The hell I was here. He was a naturally macho human being. Macho is, is a Spanish word meaning very male, very masculine. I think God made him that way. Oh, how I hate you. Half the people in the world are women. Why does it have to be you that stirs me? Really? <laughs> he couldn't help us. I had just had serious surgery. And when we were ready for me to slide backwards down in the mud, the wardrobe man and the wardrobe lady grabbed me. And they started taking my clothes off. And I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? And they said, we can't let you go down that and risk your stomach opening up and all of your innards coming out. So we're going to fix you for it. Somewhere they had found the waterproof leggings a fisherman wears if he goes into a stream and he's going to get wet. They cut the top off of it and then they pulled the pants and everything up and then tied it around my waist, then put my clothes back on, and they said, all right, now you can go do the stunt. Duke said to me, what the hell kept you? But I couldn't tell him. I told him afterwards, and he was shocked. And he said, why didn't you tell me? For God's sake, I wouldn't have made you do all those things. And I said, well, no, I'm not going to ask pity from you ever. I did the stunt and slid backwards, and we had a close-up to do, and we were going to do it the next morning. And we had to be covered in all the mud like we were at the finish of the scene we stopped in the evening time. And uh, it was bitterly cold. It was one of those freezing cold desert mornings, and they put the corridors with this mud, this bentonite, and they put a blanket around Duke and a blanket around me. And, oh, God almighty, that was awful. Because this bentonite just went through the blanket and into our skin. And it was unbelievably uncomfortable and miserable and awful. And that cold wind hitting you and going through the middle and out your back. And I was standing there beside Duke, we're both shivering, and I said, good God, Duke, I said, this is awful. It's like bird shit. And he said, what do you mean? Snot. And oh God, that made it worse. <laughs> Can you imagine being covered in that? They had worked so frequently and so well together that they had their own sort of language. He would say, oh, you'll zig and I'll zag, okay. I'll do that, you know. They, they just, they knew immediately what the other one was going to do, how that was going to work, and what would happen. And they were both very physical. They all had to fall into a mud pit, and there was a lot of fighting and all. And just watching them, they knew exactly how to do it. They had worked things out so well, and it was so natural to them. They truly had a, a sensational rapport. 
I like to think that in my life um, I was able to replicate that kind of rapport with Robert Wagner um, and that's what I can uh, relate it to um, that's the first time I ever saw it Duke was wonderful to work for in McClintock you know when my petticoat is pulled off and I continue running in those bloomers and uh, I thought God I'm going to ask Duke, can we shorten the legs a bit? Because I've got good legs. Why can't I show them? And so I asked Duke, could we shorten the legs in the bloomers? And he said, no way. We make family movies. And so I had to play the whole scene in those long drawers. But the real reason, Becky, is because I love you. And I want you and some young man to have what I had. The day that I was most nervous was the day when John Wayne and I, the Duke, and I were going to have our father-daughter scene. He liked me because I could ride. I was a bit of a tomboy, so he, uh, he liked that in me and kind of uh, was a great cheerleader and supporter. And uh, I like to think uh, that there was affection between us. The day the, the, the scene arrived, we had to shoot in a copse of trees. And I was to ride out and uh, find him there. And it was a coming-of-age scene, you know, it was about the things unspoken for so long. Once the cameras were up and in place and we were about to shoot it, we rehearsed again, they relit, and just as I was taking my position to ride into the shot, I see himself coming over to me. And I thought, Oh my God, this is the moment he's going to tell me something. He's going to impart some wonderful wisdom to me about acting or about, you know, how we can do this better or what have you. And he rolled over as he would roll, you know. And he rolled over and he rolled up to me and he took a long look at me and he said, just remember, kid. It's all in the eyes. And he turned around and rolled away. So that was my John Wayne acting class. It's all in the eyes. And he was right. Of course. Duke said, drop on by the ranch. We'll have a bowl of chili and some barbecue.